What's going on guys? It's your boy DPJ here today with another Destiny video. Now yesterday we got the latest patch which affected classes and a few other things. In today's video I'm going to go through absolutely everything you need to know. Now if you missed this Bungie weekly update I will link it in the video description so you guys can check it out and read through it all if you want. And now I may rant in this video because there's a few things I don't really agree on but still it is what it is. But getting straight into it and these are the changes that have been made to our subclasses okay so for the titan and sunbreaker and the hammer of soul super hammer travel speed increased by 1.3 percent like that thing weren't fast enough hammer detonation radius increased by 10 percent what the fuck <laughs> damage increased by 10 percent against ai combatants i mean that's fine it's pve but detonation radius and increased travel speed Damn, uh, the Striker, the Fist of Havoc, base damage increased by 50% and an additional 50% against AI combatants. To be honest though, as much as it sounds crazy, a 50% damage increased in PvP. I mean, I ain't ever sponged the Fist of Havoc anyway, so if that shit goes off anywhere near me, I always die. So adding 50% ain't gonna do anything. I mean, the radius hasn't changed, so it is what it is. And an additional 50% against AI combatants, that's a good thing it really is. Okay, now for the Defender, grenades have been changed. The Spike Grenade, damage impulses per second reduced to 5 from 10. And damage per impulse increased by 100%, but total damage is unchanged. Okay, so we're moving on to the Hunter and the Gunslinger. Now the grenades, swarm grenades increase arming radius by 0.5 meters. Detonation damage increased by 7%. Trip mines no longer attaches to targets, arms on impact, then bounces and attaches to terrain. Man, I used to love sticking people with my trip mine. What the fuck? I don't agree with this change. Trip mine damage reduced by 3%. Now a lot of the time me playing PvP, I don't always kill somebody with a trick mine straight away. A lot of the time I leave them with a little health. I mean what we're seeing here is a trick mine may not kill somebody with a direct hit if they've got full health. But I'll have to test that out. I'm not actually certain on that. Now moving on to the Gunslinger Super, the Golden Gun. Base damage increased by 50% and an additional 30% against AI combatants. Again, if I hit somebody with a direct hit, they die all the time. But then again, how will this affect at range? Because I've hit somebody with a Golden Gun at range and it hasn't killed them, which is crazy, I know. Now Dead Eye now increases Golden Gun damage by an additional 30%. Now the Gunslinger's melee, the throwing knife, base damage reduced by 10%. Now I said something about this in my video the other day. I think if you hit somebody in the head with a throwing knife, it should kill them. I don't know why they're reducing the damage of the throwing knife. That don't make sense to me. The circle of life, modified functionality. Precision kills with a throwing knife reduce the cooldown of the golden gun. Circle of life change again. No longer extends the duration of golden gun. And another circle of life change, plus one armor removed. Now passive changes. And we have scavenger, increase the amount of grenade and melee energy rewarded by 33%. Moving on to the hunter's blade dancer and grenade, skip grenade, tracking time reduced to 8 seconds from 12 seconds. And the detonation damage reduced by 13%. Another change, blink now incurs a minus 1 recovery penalty. Don't really use blink anyway so that won't really affect me but i do see a lot of people using blink in pvp so if you have felt this difference let me know down below moving on to the super and the art blade change to be less about repeatedly swinging and more about decisive strikes with additional effectiveness now base duration increased by two seconds hit detection test range increased by 0.5 meters damage increased by 30 percent against ai combatants great finally we can use blade dancer in pve that's a great change added a 0.8 second cooldown between art blade swings while airborne energy cost per swing increased by 80 percent what the fuck oh but this is good energy cost on hit decreased by 20 percent that basically changes the point that people can chase you swinging with their fucking blade dancer. That happens to me so often. I hear a hunter pop that blade dancer, I see him and I try and run for my life, but he catches up with me because he's swinging in mid-air. This hopefully will stop that. Moving on, a change to the vanish now causes the player to vanish on cast in addition to its normal functionality. And showstopper, damage radius extended by 1 meter. Moving on to the melee and the blink strike, lunge distance decreased by 0.4 meters. 
and backstab, valid backstab angle reduced by 30 degrees. Now this is good because a lot of the time blink strike, I seem like I get blink striked from in front. So if they've reduced the angle, this is great. Escape artist, invisibility effect delayed by 0.2 seconds. And fast twitch, recharge reduced by 20%. Now moving on to the passive to do with the subclass. Encore, killing an enemy with Art Blade now extends its duration and grants a 150% increase to Art Blade damage for a short time. This again, you don't really see people sponging the Art Blade in PvP, so it's a great change for that PvE. All in all, I think the changes to the Blade Dancer benefit PvE a lot more, but some of the changes made that will affect PvP are great in my opinion. Moving on to the Night Stalker and Grenades. Skip Grenade, damage impulses per second reduced to 5 from 10. And damage per impulse increased by 100%. Total damage unchanged. Now changes to the Shadow Shot Super. Now applies a suppression effect on impact. Moving on to the melee and the smoke. Change to be less frustrating to play against in PvP. But more effective in PvE. Impact damage increased by 34%. Impact suppression and damage over time reduced by 1 per second. Jump suppression removed from initial impact status effects. Unupgraded smoke cloud duration increased by 1 second. Cloud duration increased by 1 second. And jump suppression removed from cloud status effects. Vanishing smoke plus 1 agility removed. And snare cloud duration increased by 1 second. Now the passive to do with this Night Stalker subclass. Coach of the pack. Now increases recovery, armor, and agility by two per stack. Koja the pack now stacks three times. Lockdown now increases smoke duration by two seconds with a plus two additional seconds with the snare upgrade. Predator now reduces the cooldown of the shadow shot ability and shade step moved to a single dodge on a three second cooldown. Me being a hunter and hunter masterclass all day long. I agree with this change, I mean I hate playing against hunters in PvP and they shoot and roll, shoot and roll, it's so fucking annoying and I know a lot of people use it and use it to their advantage and they're going to hate this change. If you're one of them people let me know down below in that comment section but to me I think it's a great change, I really do. Moving on to the Warlock and we're going to start with the Sunsinger and its grenades. Fireball increased arming time by 0.2 seconds and Fireball again decreased victim search radius by 1 meter which is a fucking great thing. That thing seems to hit me across the damn map. Now with the melee and the scorch and the flame shield, a 0.3 second delay added before the overshield activation. And passives, Viking Funeral no longer extends the duration of Ignite effects and now weakens targets afflicted with ignite effects causing them to take 5% more damage from all sources stacking up to 3 times moving on to the voidwalker and its glide blink now incurs a minus 1 recovery penalty and the super, the nova bomb base damage increased by 50% and an additional 50% against AI combatants and lance now increases nova bomb damage by an additional 25% and that is it guys that is the changes made to the subclasses with this latest update but they've also made weapon changes as well which I will go through now to fix an issue with the year 2 version of the Thunderlord where it was not available to some players in the chaos fixed an issue with incorrect UI bars were displayed on Red Spectre Fixed an issue where exotic machine gun stability was ignoring the base stats for recoil. This affected the Thunderlord and the super good advice. Fixed an issue where the defiance of Yasmin did not have the adjusted zoom for sniper rifles introduced with the 2.2.0 patch and increased the inventory stat by 10. Auto rifles reduced damage of high rate of fire auto rifles by 6%. This is the Soul Stealer's Claw and the Dark Arena Passing and that Hakka weapon which I can't think of its name at this precise moment in time. Hand cannons increased initial accuracy and decreased accuracy drop for low range hand cannons. Made damage fall off curve steeper to better coincide with intended effective range of hand cannons. And small increases to PvE damage to all hand cannons. Amount though depends on the enemy class. Ammo. It now takes less time for your goals to automatically grab ammo for you when you're running low on ammo. This is a change for PvE. Now a lot of people don't actually know that your ghost grabs you ammo. Yet we've been at that stage where you have no ammo on any of your weapons and all of a sudden you get that ammo up here. That is your ghost grabbing your ammo. 
And this change just makes it happen quicker. Changes to exotics, a slight reduction to Hawkmoon stability with a minus five decrease. And perks, slight reduction to counterbalance effectiveness, reduces 80% of recoil angle instead of 90%, which ain't too bad of a change. And a change to a single armor, which will be an exotic, and that being the Twilight Garrison. Moved tactical air support ability to a single dodge on a 3 second cooldown. Now I don't know about you guys but I'm sick and tired of titans being able to dodge like a motherfucking fly when I'm trying to shoot them in mid air. They will still be able to dodge but not to the effectiveness they could before. So this is a great change in my opinion. And it's absolutely pissing down that side and I apologise if you can hear that through the mic. Now there's also been changes to activities which I will go through as well. Starting with missions. The alternate ending to Paradox can now be completed at any time by selecting it from the director under heroic difficulty which is great. The alternate ending to Lost to Light can now be completed at any time by selecting it from the directory under heroic difficulty. The firewall mission will now be available as soon as the player has turned in their required items to access it. Changes to Prison of Elders, the level 41 Prison of Elders Arena Activity Tooltip now properly indicates remaining weekly legacy mark rewards. These weekly legendary mark rewards are shared with the weekly heroic playlist and may be earned from either activity. Challenger of the Elders and where Varix grows impatient, point deduction now grows more severe the longer you are in a given section and actual points deducted is actually 50 times the number of times he has grown impatient. Changes to the Crucible, all weekly rotating activities in Crucible now feature weekly rewards. Fix an issue where the Trials of Osiris Boon icons from House of Rules persisted after deleting a Trials passage. And item changes, three new chroma colours have been added, orange, magenta and green. These have a chance to be found in Sterling Treasure or from dismantling the Spectre gear set. Fix an issue where players in the Ola Taken King could purchase Sterling Treasures from Eververse. Desolate class items are now collectively listed as guaranteed items instead of possible on Sterling Treasure Previews. Fix an issue where the daily heroic story missions that were from the House of Wolves were not properly awarded legendary marks. Fix an issue where the kickstance emote was not displaying proper announcement text. Fix an issue where Varix would not sell the Dreadfang sword if the player obtained and dismantle the sword on all characters. And last but not least, UI fixed an issue where equipping the armor of Val's new Monica ship caused a false postmaster notification and your friends are now displayed in the direct app when hovering over activities they are currently playing. And guys, that is it for this latest update, the 2.3.0. Let me know your opinions on any changes which are of interest of you down below in that comment section. Thanks for stopping by as always. Do smash that like button. I do appreciate the support. And I'll catch you guys on that next one. Always in the wrong. Knowing where we stand. But you and I will carry on. Get it right